so no one told me Twilight was good. Okay, so actually loads of people told me it was good because I was like in high school um, when the Twilight phase was happening. Like, it, like, I was the generation of Twilight. And I tried reading the books and I remember putting them down and my description at the time, remember I was 14, so <laughs> excuse the arrogance, was it feels like it's insulting my intelligence. But the other day I was pet sitting for my mum and I thought, I want to kind of, I want to watch something, but I don't want to be like too invested because I'm going to have to like get up and take care of this cat, <laughs> little baby kitten. So I was like, oh, Twilight, I'll put Twilight on because I really enjoy watching bad movies. And I thought Twilight was a bad movie. I'd been told it was a bad movie, like basically my whole life. So obviously I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll put Twilight on. I'll laugh at how bad it is. So I put it on and I start watching it and I'm like, ah, I am enjoying this. I'm genuinely enjoying it. My like, neck looks like real white and it, I know it's gonna look like I didn't like blend my foundation out. But the other day I like didn't put foundation on and it still had this like real contrast. I think I'm gonna go foundation my neck because otherwise people are gonna be like, bitch, blend. It's like my face is just browner than my neck. I don't, I don't control the neck skin. BRB. That made no difference. So I put on Twilight and I settled into watch it and as it went on I realized I was genuinely enjoying the film. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, <laughs> I like Twilight now. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about it um, because no one cares about it at this point. Um, it has been talked to to death. It has been revisited to death as well, like, you know, that whole media thing around it, like, it's totally, it's totally been put, talked to death, and I, I'm not an established YouTube channel, so obviously now's the perfect time for me to talk about this. <laughs> Hopefully no one will come at me, either pro-Twilighters or anti-Twilighters. This is a somewhat neutral Twilight video. Okay, so the movie starts and a deer, a deer is running. It's running through the woods. <laughs> While there's narration from Bella. But dying in the place of someone I love seems like a good way to go. And it's running from a predator, and Bella's talking, and she's the deer. Symbolism. The deer's like running for like quite a while, and, and before Edward catches it, and we see later on how fast Edward can go. So was he toying with the deer? Was he like running slow on purpose, just to like kicks, or? So the strained relationship between Bella and her dad. Um, leads to a lot of awkward conversations, which um, I actually really enjoy. Though there is so much awkwardness in this film. There's awkward conversations between Bella and her dad. It's a pretty good work lamp. The sales lady picked up the, the bed stuff. You like, you like purple, right? Purple's cool. Thanks. Between Bella and her classmates. Aren't people from Arizona supposed to be, like, really tan? Yeah. Maybe that's why they kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> Between Bella and Edward. And what are you listening to? Chad Debussy. I don't know. Yeah. Claire Lune is great. The whole movie is very awkward. Well, when you remember it's actually about teenagers and a majority of the time it's Bella who's supposed to be the sort of awkward, klutzy girl. It, it works. For me, it's very relatable. Um, the awkwardness doesn't feel like they tried to make good dialogue and it didn't work. It feels like they were like, this is... 
a strained relationship or this is teenagers trying to communicate and they are bad at it. <laughs> Perhaps I was just a very awkward teenager, but to me it really worked. I would like to bring up that I like that um, Sam is in a wheelchair and it's not his character. Um, his character is in a wheelchair, his character uses a wheelchair, but his character is not the wheelchair. It's not about him being like, oh boohoo, I'm in a wheelchair, because no one's really like that. Um, wheelchair users are really sick of that being the narrative about them. So I really like that we have a disabled character who is there and disabled and he isn't disabled for a reason, you know, it's not part of the plot, he's just a representation. That's pretty cool. And I like his friendship with Bella's dad, whose name I have forgotten. <laughs> I, li I like their relationship. It's it's it just seems like dads being dads and the wheelchair, you know, is like, you know, it's utilized like in this scene when they're like play fighting. I'm glad you're finally here. Charlie here hasn't shut up about it since you told him you were coming. Uh -huh. All right, keep exaggerating. I'll roll you into the mud. <laughs> After I ram you in the ankle. <laughs> yeah, bring it. Oh. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Jacob. Like it's it's mentioned, it's not like ignored, but it isn't also like focused on like, oh, I can't play fight with my friend because he's in a wheelchair. It's like, I'm gonna punch this guy because he's my friend. Also, he uses a wheelchair. It's like, yeah, equal opportunity, play fights. <laughs> Bella goes to school, uh, her first day of school, and she has just a butt ton of awkward encounters. Just, it's, it's all awkward. And... But, like, everyone's nice. It's nice awkward, you know? Everyone's like, oh, hi, you're new, you're from Arizona. That is weird. It is weird that everyone knows where she's from. I know that some people have claimed that she's a Mary Sue because everyone, like, likes her straight off the bat, but as someone who did move schools a few times growing up, people people knew I was new, um, people were nice, you know, and, and they knew, like, once they found out I was from England, they were like, oh, you're from England, can you say something? So to me, it doesn't seem out of place that people would come up and, like, try and be friends with her. People generally do try and be friends with you, particularly if you're new, and, you know, they want to absorb you, the new person, into their group, because it's kind of a status symbol to have the new person. You're new and exciting and different, particularly if you're foreign. Um, Bella is not foreign, but she's from a different state. I don't know how America works. What I will say is probably a, a kind of Mary Sue thing is that like all the boys seem to have a crush on her almost immediately. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem realistic. Uh, it certainly was not my experience. So, now that Bella has made friends with a surprisingly diverse cast of friendly human people, it's time to introduce the Whitey McWhitesons that she will immediately dump the humans for. Mm. It's, it's not surprising. It's not surprising. It's not like Stephanie Meyer or Twilight is the first um, movie, book, series, media to prioritize white people over non-white people. But, you know, it's supposed to be influential for young people, so I still think you know, it's like, you can't be like, oh, everyone does it, so it's fine. It's like, no, everyone does it, and it's not fine, you shouldn't. The introduction of the Cullens is honestly so funny. <laughs> it's not intentionally funny. There are some intentionally funny moods in this film. This is not one of them. <laughs> they walk in and they're all like, <sighs> And the music is intense. It's like, and like everyone's looking at them, and Bella's all like, So now I want to go on to when. Bella officially meets Edward, you know, there's the introduction of the Cullens and like they make eye contact and there's some like, and, but there's no like official meeting. The official meeting is of course the fan scene. <laughs> God, the fan scene. This makes me want to talk about the editing and direction of this movie. So let me put this down. I think 
I think actually a lot of the cheesiness and the, the badness of this movie does not actually come from the story and the characters. I think it comes from the direction of editing. There are some strange choices being made that really confuse me. I mean, there are some parts it's like, you had a bad scene to work with, you, you didn't do a good job, but how could you have made it good? And there are other times it's like, this was fairly simple and you mucked it up. This scene is one of them. All she had to do was like, walk in, the fan could have fanned her hair, and then we see Edward react. But instead they slow-mo it, so you really see her hair like... And there's also, of course, the angel bit. Subtle. So Bella goes and sits next to Edward and he's all like covering his nose and like, you know, shivering or whatever. And I like that Bella actually gives herself like a <laughs> sneaky whiff. That's really relatable. And the minute class is over, Edward runs out and he tries to change class and he's super subtle about it when he can't. He's like, I'll just have to endure it. And then runs past her. Aren't you 108 years old? Surely you've gotten better at not making yourself as conspicuous as possible. I wanted to I wanted to not talk about the editing for a, for a moment, but um, right after this scene is the tomato ketchup scene. Yeah, I've seen people mention the scene where she she gets the tomato ketchup and she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> People blame her for that? No? Like, surely someone on set should have noticed that no tomato sauce came out. Maybe the editor should have decided to use a different take where tomato sauce did come out. Didn't seem like the shot was necessary. That's not Kirsten Stewart's fault. That's, that's on the team. The team let her down. I plan to confront him and demand to know what his problem was. But he never showed. She's waiting for him for a while to come back and he doesn't. He's gone away for a while to do some vampire business. Hello. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to introduce myself last week. I'm, I'm Edward Cullen. He's back. He's chatty. So you're enjoying the rain? <sighs> what? You're asking me about the weather? Yeah, I, I guess I am. His his awkwardness makes sense. Like she she's awkward. We've established that Bella is awkward. He's also awkward, and I, you know, he's the different to the typical like suave, charming vampire. I realize he. I think he's supposed to be suave and charming, but he comes across as awkward and clunky. But it makes sense because he can't read her mind. We find out later he can't read her mind. So this is actually. Like, a vampire who's for the past, like, nearly century has been relying on, on mind reading to get along with people and obviously is way out of his depth and has lost his ability to small talk. I think if I had to talk to, I don't know, Bacon? <laughs> if someone, like, put a Bacon buddy in front of me and then I had to, like, make a conversation with it, I would also struggle. <laughs> so, the awkwardness makes sense. Leave the movie alone. Bella says that she, she hates all any kind of cold, wet thing. Any cold, wet thing, I don't really... We see them later in the corridor, they're still chatting, Edward's still like, he's like, I, 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 I can't read your thoughts and you smell tasty, I gotta talk to you. Honestly, if I was a mind reader and again, a bacon buddy approached me and I couldn't read its mind, I too would be intrigued, so... I see they've won the Golden Onion. Oh, the Golden Onion. Uh, I didn't talk about it earlier, um, but I remember watching it and being like, the Golden Onion! Oh, the Golden Onion. And then later seeing them having it, I was like, they won the Golden Onion? And we didn't get a award ceremony? I'm so, I'm so mad about that. I don't know why, I'm really invested in the Golden Onion. Oh, the Golden Onion. My favorite scene is now. This is my favorite scene. It's the funniest scene. Bella notices Edward's eyes and Edward 
um, almost an over a century year old vampire who has presumably had to explain his eyes away multiple times just says it's the effervescence. Hey, did you get contacts? No. Your eyes were black the last time I saw you and now like golden brown. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's the uh it's the fluorescence. Um And then he's out of there. He's gone. Um, and this hits me. This hits me on like another level that I don't think like other people are necessarily going to get because like, no, did I say effervescence? <laughs> Fluorescence. <laughs> I'm leaving it in. Doesn't matter. Um, Fluorescent lights for autistic people pretty much universally like if you're an autistic person with a sensory issue you're gonna hate fluorescent lights <laughs> but anyone who like is like oh no fluorescent lights are fine like they are of the devil and he created them to torment people like me <laughs> so when edward's like yeah it's the fluorescence and then just like bolts out of there i'm like mm, autistic mood hashtag relatable Hey, this is really hard. How do you two do this? My throat hurts. So now comes the sort of the pivotal scene, the, the shift in the dynamic where like Edward goes from being kind of a cute boy who acts weird around her to interesting mystery man. Bella nearly gets hit by a car. Edward saves her. We've all seen it. Very exciting. And then she goes to the hospital and is made to feel cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I was standing right next to you, Bella. No. You were next to your car. Across the lot. No, I wasn't. <gasps> yes, you were. Bella, you're, uh... You hit your head. I think you're confused. But, you know, obviously that doesn't last long because Edward, a nearly century-year-old vampire, is really bad at lying. He is, he, like, he tries, he's basically, he's like, oh, no, you're imagining things, Bella. And she's like, no, I'm not. He's like, ah, oh, you got me. No one's going to believe you. I know what I saw. Mm, what exactly was that? You... You stopped the van. You... You pushed it away with your hand. Well, nobody's gonna believe you. So. You didn't even try that hard. This is within the same conversation. Like, damn, boy, how has no one found out about you? Look at you, huh? You're alive. <laughs> the single most teenage boy in the world asks Bella out to prom. And this is, this is not really a major scene other than, you know, obviously Edward's like right behind him and he just like you just like feel sad for him um because you know he's gonna get shot down so, mm -hmm. sorry my guy now i wanted to ask you you know if if uh i you know it's, it's like a month away but uh <laughs> do you want to uh go to go to prom prom <laughs> so what, what do you think about what um but the interesting part to me is that he's like, yeah, it's, it's like a month away. So he says like, like a month away. And I think Bella's only been at this school for like a few weeks. This movie ends at prom. So this, the entirety of the rest of this film, the events of this film that happen, happen within a one month period. Edward approaches Bella. Uh, consistently, this is what he continues to do early on in the relationship. He approaches Bella. He asks her personal questions. He then tells her to stay away from him. He gets mad at her and then leaves. What's in Jacksonville? How did you know about that? I, you didn't answer my question. But look, we, we shouldn't be friends. You don't know anything. Hi. Um, are you going to be riding with us? No, our bus is full. 
only said it'd be better if we weren't friends, not that I didn't want to be. It means if you were smart, you'd stay away from me. That's not attractive behavior. Hello, it's me. Um, I had some extra thoughts and I couldn't be bothered doing anything with this, so this is my natural form. So when Edward's like, so you, you're trying to figure me out, and Bella's like, I have considered radioactive spiders and kryptonite. And okay. I don't want it to bother me that she got it wrong because she ha she has like kryptonite makes superman weak it doesn't give superman superman powers that's because he's an alien so that's annoying but I, I what annoys me is that the way this character is written I don't know if she's gotten it wrong because oh it's Bella isn't she silly she doesn't understand or it's isn't Bella cool because she knows comic book things and, and she's different and unique. It could be either one. <laughs> and it annoys me that I don't know which way to make fun of it. <laughs> like, I just want to know what the intention was so that I can mock it. They go to the beach and this is when our Native American characters show up and they show up basically to be weirdly prejudiced against the whitest man and also to be mysterious. Yeah, because Cohen's a freak. She got that right. You guys know him? The Cullens don't come here. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not American, and I'm especially not Native American, but that felt iffy to me. So I actually looked it up, and it's a seem, it just seemed to be iffy. <laughs> Results are mixed. There's, you know, there's some positives, obviously, for the characters being represented as just everyday people, um, non sort of stereotypical clothing, and they are, while they are hypersexualized, and there is a bit of an issue with the hypersexualization of people of color, they are equally as sexualized as like Edward and that, you know, this sort of like, although I don't think Edward keeps his shirt on more often than Jacob does, but in this movie, neither of them get naked, so in this movie, we got we got balance. I mean, Jacob's not really in this movie. He's just there because he's going to be in the later movies. So we have to see him in this one. Uh, I think that's a shame. I would have liked to see an actual establishment of their relationship other than the, this walk on the beach where he's like, ha ha ha, there's a story and like my people were wolves and also maybe they're vampires. Ha, oh, except I'm not going to say it because I still can't. He's pretending it's a story, so he could be like, ha ha ha, they're vampires, isn't that funny? <laughs> it's just a story, though. That probably would have saved Bella a lot of intense Googling later, but... Whatever. He had to keep it on the hush-hush, because what if she believed him? After, after this, you know, little nugget of, of story, Bella does an intense Google search to find a book at a store Later on, her friends are like, oh, we might go dress shopping. And she's thinking, oh, I want to go buy that book. So she asks to go with. And then we see her being the worst friend. Bella should have just been like, I want to buy a book. Can we drive there together? And then I'll like peace out while you guys are being the sh getting the dresses on. And her friends would have been like, yeah, that's OK, Bella. We're really nice. Whatever. She had to be a dick. So that she could go and buy the book later, so that when she was walking back, it was late and there were creepy guys, and these creepy guys would be predatory towards her, so that Edward could show up and save her. Because of course. Get in the car. That was a very dangerous maneuver. It's pretty typical for stories where like the romantic lead guy is like dubious in character he might be a bad boy he might be explicitly a villain but not towards our heroine um in order to solidify him as the good bad boy we have to have some bad bad boys show up and usually you know there's a threat of sexual violence 
because of course there is. I mean, even like this movie doesn't like straight up say it. I mean, Edward says, you should have heard the vile things they were thinking. And you know, you know. And he shows up and he, he saves her so that we can be like, oh, he saved her from other men who were going to do violent things to her. So that means he's a good person, which is not logical. <laughs> That is not correlated, so this basically he's just claiming his, his territory, it's, it's, it's not the same. Um, so, you know, adult me has some problems with that trope. I understand why it's used here, uh, but you know what? Tween me would have been all about that jam, because particularly when you are a teenager, you're very, hy like, very hypersensitive to all of that. But you're just getting into that point where you're starting to be aware of your body and how people interact with your body and everyone is basically telling you that you're a victim and you have probably experienced some sort of victimhood of some you know predatory remarks or, or something like that and you felt unsafe and the fantasy of having someone from the the predator coming and protecting you from the other predators like, that's kind of a power fantasy. It's like, this is my protector. I mean, the fact that, you know, we are so hypersensitive to being victims of sexual violence is pretty horrific. And the fact that it even plays into something clearly aimed at tweens and early teens says something pretty horrific about our society. But that's this is a fun Twilight video. We're not going to go into systemic rape culture because that's a downer. I genuinely enjoy the exchange they have in the car. It's two lines, but it does establish that, you know, it, it, a quirk of their personalities, you know, Bella's like concerned about safety and, and Edward thinks that's like cute and funny, particularly because he's a vampire. It's kind of like an in-joke to him that's like, well, you know, if we were to crash, chances are I damaged the car more than it would damage me. But <laughs> Distract me so I won't turn around. You should put your seatbelt on. <laughs> you should put your seatbelt on. I think it's a it's a nice exchange. There's not a lot. There's actually not a lot in this movie that establishes their relationship. It's very hard to believe these two are are made for each other. I can read every mind in this room, apart from yours. This is when Edward tells Bella that he's psychic, which seems, again, how has no one found out you're a vampire? <laughs> he doesn't even go to explain, he's just like, oh yeah, I can read people's thoughts. And she doesn't ask about it, she's just like, oh, you can't read my thoughts, does that make me wrong? <laughs> which is relatable, but, and Edward finds that adorable, but it's still like, there's no follow-up. Why is he psychic? Is the rest of his family psychic? Like, the rest of the, like natural questions you should ask are not asked and I don't know if they were asked in the book and just not put into the movie because there's already a lot of dialogue but it's dumb it's dumb they drive home and oh no there's been a murder Carlisle comes out of the police station he's like there was an animal attack he died how Animal attack. On the on the drive home, Bella accidentally touches Edward's hand, and it's for a fraction of a second. But she's like, oh, "You're really cold." And this is new information. I right? he's cold to the touch, so she googles that. Somehow, there's an intense googling scene. It is even intenser than the last one. Can you believe? She comes to the conclusion that he's a vampire. I have issues with this. My issues with this are dumb, okay? Just letting you know, my issues are frivolous. But the information she has, super strong, pale, doesn't go out in the sun, doesn't eat, cold. These are all basic vampire lore things. Like, if you've seen a vampire movie, 
you know these things about vampires. I think super fast is in there as well. Since we're on two hands of information that is basic vampire lore. I think she didn't need to Google it. She knows, hopefully she knows what vampires are. Almost everyone does. Like vampire movies, books, comics. Surely she's come across a vampire story of some kind and she knows vampire lore. The idea that she'd need to Google any of this or do any research to come to the conclusion on pretty minimal evidence. She doesn't like one incident of super strength, one incident of super fast and that she has been told was not true and was a like possible concussion, which like, you know, she, obviously it was real. But again, she's only got one incident. She touched his hand for a second. Lots of people are pale and their excuse for not going out in the sun is pretty good doesn't have that much evidence like no excessive evidence so she could have come to that conclusion I think without googling so I have issues with the google scene because I think she should have figured it out anyway <laughs> I burnt my tongue <laughs> Not even brewed, it's just hot water.